So, welcome back. As a recap, uh, we will just go through this uh, perceptron convergence theorem and followed by we will explain what is actually the perceptron convergence and we will also see what is the proof, how the perceptron uh, convergence theorem can be proven, right. We will see what is actually the perceptron convergence theorem. So, the perceptron convergence theorem simply states a linearly contained training set, right, x dash and an initial vector, weight vector w1 are there. So, we are going to have an uh, x, a set of inputs are there and there will be an initial vector will be there, I mean weight vector will be there and let S w be the weight vector sequence, right and generated in the response to the presentation of a training sequence of S x upon application of a perceptron training learning law, right. So, actually we, our intention is we need to make the perceptron to learn, right. What is actually mean by learning? We are going to adjust the weights, right, so that the error can be minimized between the actual result what we get and what is the desired result. So, this error has to be minimized. Then for some finite index k naught, so that is actually convergence. So, I should be able to get some value k which satisfies this particular condition. Some value of this w should be there. So, that for all values of x, I will be getting the all the desired values of y, supposing if I assume my y, y is my output. So, in this case we have w k naught which is equal to w k naught plus 1, k naught plus 2 all belongs to w s as a solution vector. So, the perceptron convergence theorem simply states that there should be some bounded value of learning should happen, it should not be an infinite learning, right. So, whenever we are continuously presenting the x values and every time the w the weights are updated with some finite number of iterations or with some finite number of samples, my w good should get trained. So, that the network can get trained and it will be useful for our application. So, this is what actually the perceptron convergence theorem states and followed by actually we have seen a few things like what is meant by the perceptron con convergence and how it is actually applied. We have given a small uh, algorithm where each and every time the weight will be actually updated right. So, the weight will be updated. So, this may be the equation every time the weight is actually getting updated here and this is actually the algorithm that can be used. So, we are going to start with an initial weight which is actually the w 0 right which can be 0 or it can be any random value can also be selected right? because anyway we are going to tune it. So, what should be the starting point of w? So, again we have two options either the w can be started with some value 0 or it can also start with some random numbers whatever it can be. So, in both the cases it will get tuned. So, that is not actually a problem here fine. So, we are going to start with and we will be repeating the process every time we are going to calculate this function and the weight value will be updated. At some point of finite iterations then I will be getting my final w which is going to satisfy for all the inputs I will be getting the corresponding desired output ranges and this equation especially presents how the weight is getting updated. So, here actually already we have seen the w n plus 1 is actually the new weight which is equal to w n which is actually the old weight uh, and there is going to be a learning factor which is going to be in the range of 0 to 1 and this is the desired value and y is the actual value. So, that is actually the error and then we have the multiplied by x n right. So, this is actually the weight updation of uh, system. Now, we will explain uh, a simple derivation uh, which is actually the perceptron convergence theorem. So, for this case again we are going to take a similar network setup something like we will be having some uh, n number of inputs are there right. We will assume the first one is actually the bias right the first one can be the bias. So, it start with the plus 1 right yes it starts with plus 1 and here I am going to provide the values x 1, x 2, x 3 and all and here I am going to have a point called v right we can call it as a small v and this is actually a 
linear combiner we can say it is a linear combiner. So, simply of course, as per the equation right. So, x 1 into x naught into w naught x 1 into w 1. So, these are all the corresponding weights w 1 we can say this is w naught up to this is going to be w 3 and we can go up to x n right which is actually given by w n and this point is actually the linear combiner. So, which combines all the values and I will be having one output function which can be called as a phi of v which is actually a hard limiter. So, the hard limiter output is going to be the final output. So, either it is going to be 1 or it is going to be 0. So, whatever the value we are getting here, we will be getting either 1 or 0 after the final limiter. So, this is actually the initial assumption what we are going to do that and in that case, what is actually the V of n? We can say each and everything is going to be a not a single value, everything is going to be a series of values. So, what we can do is our V of n which can be equal to the W t right the W transpose of n into x of n W transpose of n into x of n. So, this is actually the general equation. So, the V of n can be combined as W transpose. So, why I have to make the transpose because we are we can easily operate with the matrix right and there is going to be a vector. So, we can just make it as a vector symbol everywhere no issues right. So, my V of n is given by the W transpose of n into x of n. Now, we are going to make the first assumption we are going to have only two sets we are going to have only two classifications C 1 as well as C 2 and we will just draw some two symbols right. So, this is actually my uh, the convex hull of C 1 and uh, this is my convex hull of C 2 right and uh, the main condition is C 1 and C 2 are linearly separable. The C 1 and C 2 are linearly separable and of course, we have seen that this W t that is the W transpose into this x of n of course, w transpose of n into x of n equal to 0 in this point right, because one end we are going to have the negative value, the other end is going to be the positive value. So, it should have the origin. So, that value should be equal to 0 and now we are going to select one h 1 which is actually a subset of a belongs to a subset of c 1 and I am going to take some samples from the C 2 set. So, that is called H 2 which again belongs to the subset of C 2. So, what is actually H 1? What is actually H 2? And in that case my W t dot x is greater than 0 here my W transpose of n into x of n is greater than 0 for any value that comes from this first set actually that is h 1 right. So, in this case actually what happens for every for every x that belongs to the set c 1 that belongs to the set c 1. Now, similarly of course, w 2 n and uh, x of n is going to be less than or equal to 0 for every value of x that belongs to c 2. Right. So, in this case actually when the value of w transpose n is into x of n is greater than 0, then that is for c 1 and uh, less than 0 uh, for c 2. Why I have put uh, less than or equal to here? You can also put greater than or equal to here and you can just put less than alone here that is also no problem we can take it for assumption for just arbitrary value I have taken something like this. And then if this is going to be the case when I have to update my weights right. So, this is actually the initial setup I have explained there are going to be a set of inputs there are going to be a set of weights a function v is there and finally, I will be getting the output y and we have some inputs the inputs are taken from two sets c 1 and c 2 and h 1 h 2 are the subsets of c 1 and c 2 and whenever the value is greater than 0 I will be that the data is belongs to c 1 and whenever the value is going to be less than or equal to 0, the data actually belongs to C 2. So, this is actually the initialization what we can do that. Suppose for any value of input, I have given some input and then the network is actually going to give some output and if it 
wrongly classifies a data. Either the data is a C1 data, but it says it is a C2 or the data belongs to C2, but the system says it is a C1. So, when it wrongly classifies, then which parameter I have to update? I have to update only this weights, only this weights. So, here actually the W0 is the bias, we can say the W1, W2 up to Wn, because the A x is going to continuously vary no problem. This is my desired output is also there, which may be from uh, the C1, C2 classification. So, the only value which needs to be varied is what are going to be the W. So, in that case, what we are going to say is what is going to be the weight updation process. So, here we will see weight updation process. Right. So, we will be now explaining the weight update, uh, updation process. So, the first step of course, what we are going to do is, we have to take any value of input. Say for example, some input x of n actually I have taken. Now, in that case, my weight again it is going to be a vector. So, I am just putting an arrow mark. So, it is a vector of n plus 1 equal to weight of n. Right. So, even if I forgot, you can put, because the x is going to be a vector and a w is going to be a vector. So, all these things are actually vector points. Now, w of n plus 1 equal to w of n, right. When it is going to happen, my current weight is equal to the previous weight, right. In that case, what does actually happen? In this case, this is going to happen if, right. This is going to happen if the w transpose x right. So, already we have described w transpose into x of n is greater than 0 and the data x is coming from C 1, then no problem, right. So, I have taken a x of n and that x of n is actually I am not waiting uh, updating the weight, why? Because it is correctly classified, the data is from uh, C 1 and my output is also greater than 0. So, it is properly classified. In the other case, suppose w of n plus 1 equal to w of n, right. So, all these things are vectors. If, what is going to be the other case? The w transpose of n into x of n is less than 0. In that case, what is the condition? And the x is coming from C 2 group, x 2 is coming from C 2 group. So, in both the cases, I need not update my weight, because the current weight and the previous weight no change, because it is already classified, the system is already learnt, it is doing properly. So, in that case, I do not need to update the weight. Now, what is going to be the problem? What may be the problem here? Suppose, if this w t of n n t x of n is greater than 0 and x belongs to instead of C 1, if I get it from C 2. So, the data need to be classified as C 2, but I am getting the value as greater than 0. In that case, I have to update the weight. The ulta is also same, when it is going to be less than or equal to 0, but the data is coming from C 1. So, in the first case, I do not need, uh, uh, I do not need to any update. In the second case, I need not uh, update the weight, but for the case 3 and the case 4, for these two cases, I have to update the weight. So, how I have to update the weight? Of course, we know that it is going to be w of n plus 1, this is equal to the w n right w of n minus eta into x of n, eta into x of n. Now, actually what happens? In this case, say for example, when the value is greater than 0, I should get actually C 1, right, but I am getting C 2. So, C 2 is actually comparably higher than this. So, I have to put a subtraction here. So, the weight has to be come down. And on the other case, here the w n plus 1 equal to the previous value of w n plus 
eta into x of n, if this condition is there. Right. So, now actually for two cases, for w n plus 1 need not be modified here and here and in these two cases, I have to change my w n by either adding a value or by subtracting the value, whether I have to take this C 1 or C 2, because normally actually what happens, whenever the data is actually from C 1, the value should be greater than 0, right. For C 2, the value should be less than 0, but now actually what happens for a C 2, it is giving a greater than 0, so I have to reduce my weight. For C 1, it is giving uh, less than or equal 0, so I have to increase my weight. So, here I have put a minus value, here I put a negative plus value. So, the weight will be either increased or decreased based on from which data I am getting, which data set I am getting, either I am getting the data from C 1 or I am getting the data from C 2. And once this is actually done, what is going to be the proof for this? Right. So, this is what actually we have uh, discussed right as the perceptron convergence and what is actually perceptron convergence? It simply means that there should be some mechanism right using this updation, I should be able to get the final output, a final set of weights for which all the outputs are correct for any set of inputs. When the input is from C 1, it should give C 1 output, when the input is C 2, it should give C 2 output. So, within some finite iterations, the system should able to, should be able to learn that per, per, uh, particular data set. So, this is actually the proof. So, if we can prove it within the finite number, because it cannot take infinite time for learning, right. Say for example, if it is going keep on learning so many things, then we cannot use the system at all, right. So, within some finite numbers or number of iterations, the system should be able to do that, so that it can classify C 1 into C 1 and C 2 as C 2. Right. So, in that case, we are going to have some assumptions. We are going to have some assumptions. Of course, we are going to make some three assumptions in our case. The first assumption is, of course, already we have seen the system is linearly separable. Right. So, if the system is not linearly separable, something like this. Right. Sorry, I think. Uh, Suppose, if this is going to be a system and this is another system, right. So, these two things cannot be separated easily, these are all actually not linearly separable. This is not the case in our case. So, first the first assumption is we are going to make it linearly separable. We are going to make it as linearly separable. So, my circuit, will, my is, uh, ranges will be something like this. C 1, C 2 and in between I can have a line, a straight line of course. The second condition is the initial values of the vector is assumed as 0. So, we are going to start with all the vectors, all the weight vectors as 0, right. So, this is a weight vector, it is going to be 0 and of course, during the tuning process, it will be modified. The third one, we are going to make the eta that is actually the learning factor equal to 1. So, the learning factor will be running from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. If the value is very low, right say for example, 0 0.001, then the learning will take a long time, right. So, there will be so many iterations. On the other hand, if the value of uh, eta is going to be very high, right, almost similar to 1 or something like that, in that case, it can uh, overrun. So, we have to take a mid value, but for the mathematical calculations, if I give eta equal to 1 for multiplications, we can simply ignore it. So, I am assuming my eta value which is the learning factor is equal to 1. So, with these three assumptions, we are going to give some inputs to the system, right. So, the system is already there and we are giving once uh, one first uh, input and we are going to give some sort of inputs, right. Say for example, the x n sorry x of n, it is a vector, right. So, this is actually the input vector that has been continuously given and assume that there are going to be only some uh, what we can say, this is going to be the misclassifications, right. So, whenever it gives a C 1 input, it gives a C 2, whenever I give a C 2 input, it gives C 1. 
So, it is always better, right. So, when the system is not working properly, then every time it is being taught, right. So, we are going to adjust the weight vectors or the weight values. So, whenever the system does some misclassification, right, in that case I am going to update. So, the system learns. So, that is always good actually and in that case initially we are going to give a set of data and all these input for the, all these inputs the system is giving some misclassification. So, it is giving some errors and in that case I have to give some mechanism so that it can be tuned here. So, in that case actually what we have to do is my x of n belongs to my x of n right it belongs to h 1, h 1 is actually a subset of c 1. So, we can straight away write it as h 1 no issues and eta is actually already 1 we have assumed in that case right. Now, what is actually my w n plus 1 here a vector w n plus 1 which is actually equal to w n again it is going to be a vector plus eta into x 1. So, eta is going to be only 1. So, just I can put x of n. Right. So, this is actually the general equation which can be used w n plus 1 is equal to w n plus x of n. This is all these things are actually the vector inputs right and of course, the w of 0 we are going to assume it as 0 that is again taken here. So, in this case what is going to be my w 1? My w 0 is already 0 we have actually made as an assumption and what is actually the w 1? w 1 is equal to here it is going to be w 0 which is actually 0 right. So, I can simply erase this and which is equal to x of 0 right. So, here it is n equal to 0. So, 0 plus 1 is 1 here x of n equal to 0 I can put it and what about the w 2 actually in this case my n is going to run from 1 to n right. So, there is going to be multiple numbers of uh, I mean the inputs are given there. So, w 2 is equal to x of 1 plus x of 0, x of 1 plus x of 0 and similarly w n plus 1 in a similar way w n plus 1 can be written as of course, all these things are vectors right which can be equal to all these values will be coming here. So, in this case actually what happens here it is going to be x of 0 plus x of 1 plus up to x of n, x of n. So, all these things values will be coming here and the eta I have missed it because I have assumed my eta value is equal to 1 right. And in this case I have taken two assumptions. The first assumption is of course, uh, we have taken uh, the eta equal to 1. So, that is actually done. And the second assumption is V naught equal to that means the initial values of W 0 equal to 0. So, that again actually I have missed it, I have done it. Now, the third assumption what we have made is C 1 and C 2 are linearly separable. So, what does it mean actually? It simply says, it simply says there is a guaranteed solution that exists, right. So, that is actually the assumption 3. So, in this case what we are going to do the C 1 and C 2 are actually linearly separable. So, a, a, I mean a guaranteed solution that exists here right. In this case the w and what is going to be that solution right. So, we are going to take that solution w suffix 0 right. Again this is going to be a vector it is a group of uh, collection and x of n which is uh, greater than equal to 0 which is greater than equal to 0 for any value of x for any value of x that belongs to the category c 1. So, what is actually the meaning? Here I am not giving w of 0 right you have to see the difference. This is w of 0 this is I am not going to take. So, when it is w of 0 what happens? w of 0, w of 1, w of 2. So, it will be increasing continuously but I am going to take only one instance which can be called as w suffix 0 right. So, among the so many weights I am going to pick one particular weight which can be called as w 0 right. So, I am going to take one instance of w 0 into x of n 
which will be greater than 0 for any value of C1. So, this is actually the solution I want. Whenever I am giving the input from C1, my W naught of, uh, of course, it should be n, right? Int x of n should be greater than, uh, greater than 0, right? So, in that case, when this value is greater than 0, now we are going to define one value that is called alpha, one value that is called alpha, which is going to be a minimum value, right? because it should be greater than 0, right? this value should be greater than 0. So, this minimum value of satisfying this particular condition. So, what is actually this condition? W naught of transpose into x of s, W naught transpose into x of n, right? you can put here of course. Right? So, I am going to take a alpha value, which is going to be slightly higher than 0, which is going to be a positive value right so that i will be getting this value here so this alpha is actually a minimum value which is wt w not transpose into x of n into where x of n belongs to the category c1 in in that case i will be getting always a positive value now we will take another equation we will take the previous equation actually equation number 1 what is actually equation number 1 w of n plus 1 is equal to w of z x of 0 x of 0 plus x of 1 up to x of n right so all these things are vectors right so this is actually the equation now we are going to multiply this equation by w0 of t w0 of t we are going to multiply with this now actually what will happen w0 of t into w of n plus 1 right w of z into w of n plus 1 this is equal to w 0 of t into x of 0 plus w 0 of t so we are pre multiplication on both the sides right so into x 1 up to x n so w 0 of t into x n we can write like this right so it's pre multiplying by this factor w 0 of t right now when we are going to multiply this i will be getting this particular equation now actually what we have assumed for every w 0 of t my value should be slightly above uh, this uh, 0, right, greater than 0. So, what we can conclude is something like w 0 of t into w of n plus 1 is, uh, this is equal to some small number into n into alpha, which is actually going to be, every term is going to be some value above 0, right, some value above the 0. Now, in this case actually we are going to have one theorem that is called the Cauchy Schwartz. Cauchy Schwartz theorem. So, this theorem simply states for a norm, right, right a norm function w0 square plus plus w n plus 1 again the square this should be greater than or equal to w 0 t of n plus 1 w 0 t into w of n plus 1 right the whole square. So, this is actually this theorem is actually called as Cauchy squash hours theorem. And according to this theorem, what we can do is, we can write it as w 0, the whole square into uh, the second function will become uh, w transpose n plus 1, w transpose n plus 1. Again, it is going to be a norm function, which is going to be the whole square, which is equal to on the right hand side, I am going to write it as alpha square plus alpha square into n square. And in that case, the w 
transpose of n plus 1 the mod of this right the norm function of this is actually greater than or equal to so this should be greater than or equal to sorry it should be greater than or equal to the n square alpha square so this value will come here w0 the whole square right now actually from this equation what we have seen is we are going to have some finite value alpha the value of n is again finite and here actually n plus 1 here it is over the old weight and this is going to be the new weight and from this equation we can confirm that we will be having some finite value of n and alpha so that the system is going to always converge. So, this is actually the proof for this particular perceptron convergence theorem, but what is actually the problem whenever I am going to take the increase in the numbers of n's right. So, n is equal to actually what is the number of samples that is useful for training. So, n we are going to start with 1, 2, 3 and so many things will be there and when the when the n value is actually increasing here actually what happens the n square actually we are using. So, the number of terms will be keep on increasing in that case. So, what is actually the main problem instead of converging the convergence is done, but the main problem is the number of terms will be keep on increasing. So, the complexity of this particular calculation will be increasing. So, this is actually the solution and the proof for this perceptron convergence theorem.